respected chairpersons, and I thank <coughs> all the delegates who are here, who have opted for Hall B instead of Hall A. Basic science is not something which would attract large majority, and you as a practitioners have to listen to or look at all the learning points you learned on what is the root cause of diabetes. We distinctly remember now what uh, Dr. Godbole taught us on what started first. Probably insulin resistance started first. I am not sure as we clinicians could decide what exactly is very important or a root cause, but I will try to make some studies in 15 minutes on the subject. These are some of the disclosure, which has nothing to do with today's talk. This is what pancreas does. It provides natural insulin secretion when food is consumed, which is called prandial insulin secretion. And when food is not consumed, it is a basal insulin secretion. Before I go into the, some more details, let's look at what is beta cell dysfunction in type 2 diabetes. We are talking about adult diabetes. You have abnormal pulsatile insulin secretion. This is in basal state, which is happening every few minutes. It has an important role to suppress hyperglycemia in a basal state. And as you learned, major disease, major organ is liver. But our chairperson, Dr. Zargar, subsequently we also learned that kidney also contributes. And now we don't use HGO, we use EGP, endogenous glucose production, where kidneys also contribute to a glucose production. And both of them get suppressed in a basal state by continuous insulin secretion. The most important hallmark defect in type 2 is the absent first phase insulin in response to a glucose which comes from a meal. And this is as early as 6 to 9 minutes after food is consumed or in response to OGTT, glucose being given as a challenge. And because the first phase is absent or a defective or a poor, there is an exaggerated second phase and over the years of diabetes, the second phase of insulin secretion also becomes abnormal. These are two major defects of beta cell dysfunction and you have, when beta cells are stressed in early years of diabetes, there is excess release of pro-insulin which is not supposed to exist in non-diabetic and they should not be there, but there is more pro-insulin than an insulin, so the ratio gets altered. Pro-insulin being a weak glucose lowering agent cannot offer an action similar to insulin. All this in long term or right from early results into decreased insulin content in islets or beta cells and decreased granule density. And we learned long back from UKPDS that arbitrarily beta cell function is lost by 50% at the time of diagnosis, the way it was estimated in UKPDS. Going into the story of uh, insulin resistance versus insulin secretory defect, it is very difficult for us to figure out, like a chicken and egg story, what came first. But many of us, probably as clinicians, we believe, and Dr. Godbole convincingly showed that uh, insulin resistance came much, many more years earlier. And these are some of the risk factor, the uh, liver and muscle being in the center, all resulting into higher and higher demand for beta cell function or an insulin secretion. And so if there was ample insulin available, in spite of insulin resistance, patient would not develop diabetes. Many of us have insulin resistance, almost one-fourth of population and with some degree of obesity or adiposity will have IR, will have some degree of fatty liver, NAFLD, and we would still not become diabetic because we have too much or ability to secrete insulin for the whole life. This is kind of dissecting various organs which have a specific role in skeletal muscle, liver, adipose tissue, and even a brain has a role, all driving insulin resistance, but eventually are trying to fail insulin secretion, beta cell function, coupled with islet inflammation. So there is a strong link in which obesity and insulin resistance are linked with pancreatic function. 
We know that type 2 diabetes is heterogeneous disorder and beta cells have to fail to develop hyperglycemia. Otherwise, it would not happen. You would have all features of metabolic syndrome but no hyperglycemia if beta cell will continue to function. How do they fail? Let's get into some more studies. This is showing you the relationship or a transition in a natural course of a disease. People migrate from NGT to IGT. This is few years before they develop IGT. You can see here insulin resistance is already there and that has resulted in to increase workload for beta cell. Beta cell mass cannot cope up and so there is a reduction in beta cell function right from an early stage of IGT. Obviously that progresses further when diabetes is diagnosed. So if we are referring to diabetes, beta cells have failed significantly. Only thing this so-called beta cell failing is not registered because this is happening gradually, unlike type 1 diabetes where it happens rapidly. If we look at a study on natural history or development of diabetes, this was an elegant study carried out way back on Pima Indians and they looked at, followed up for a long period, and they looked at insulin action or a sensitivity on x-axis plotted against insulin secretion. And they looked at those who developed diabetes and those who did not develop diabetes. From NGT to IGT to diabetes showed that insulin secretion failed when insulin action also reduced or the insulin insensitivity was developed. So there is a stage of beta cells failing which would convert people from NGT to IGT to diabetes. And this is in terms of in the same study, there was 27% decrease in acute insulin response to glucose when they shifted from NGT to IGT. This is right at the stage of pre-diabetes. During transition from IGT to diabetes, again acute insulin response decreased by additional 57%. And finally, even 30-minute insulin response to an oral glucose decreased, but much to a lesser extent. This is in relation to second phase of insulin secretion. So in a natural course of development of diabetes, you require a beta cells to fail and insulin responses to glucose to fail. This is shown by Ralph Di Franzo way back, and this is from a review paper by himself in 2013, where you can see again a different categories of subject. You have a glucose level. This is glucose going up from IGT to obese diabetic with high insulin and low insulin. You have a glucose mediated insulin-mediated glucose uptake predominantly in skeletal muscle, which is falling down, and you have insulin level. So you can see this is glucose uptake here. This is insulin secretion right up to obese NGT. Hyperinsulinemia compensates and prevents diabetes or glucose level to go up. In spite of glucose uptake being low, high insulin compensates and prevents hyperglycemia. As insulin secretion falls, glucose level will go higher. This is again shown with a different kind of calculation of insulin disposition where insulin secretion has been adjusted with insulin resistance and this is called disposition index. You have a delta insulin as incremental insulin response to a glucose challenge. You have a delta glucose which is incremental glucose level to a glucose challenge and this is divided by insulin resistance. And this is again a different stages of development in the natural course of a disease from NGT to IGT and you find that insulin disposition index falls significantly. This is predominantly being driven by insulin secretion as insulin resistance remains constant as people have more and more secretory defect, they will progress from NGT to towards diabetes. Now if we look at in the pancreatic cell or in pancreatic organ on beta cell area, that is a beta cell mass versus a C-peptide glucose ratio, again you have three kinds of population. You have NGT, IGT and diabetes in three different colors in a fasting state as well as a post-glucose challenge state. 
and this paper in diabetes care shows that this is C peptide response and this is beta cell area or beta cell mass. As a person develops IGT in a green dot versus diabetes in a red dot, you will find that beta cell area goes down, you have a C peptide responses also go down, not only in fasting or not only, but also in post glucose challenge test. So irrespective of a stage of fasting or a meal challenge or a glucose challenge, person moves from high insulin secretion to low insulin secretion and moves in parallel with reduced beta cell mass. So both the things progress together and you find that there are many beta cell stressors which are happening or which are operational during pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes. Insulin resistance being right at the top which you learned recently increased metabolic load so there is constant higher caloric supply still continue to happen and with kind of adiposity we have a low subclinical inflammation right operational. There is also some role of genetic susceptibility for both insulin resistance as well as beta cell defect and these are all stressors for inflammatory for islet response which are operational and they are present during the course of conversion to IGT to continuously in a stage of type 2 diabetes for worsening of diabetic state. As the same thing put up differently, you can see here right from intrauterine environment, which would probably well addressed by Dr. Yagnik from the same city of Pune, who told us that maybe diabetes starts in utero and we do not know what came first, whether in utero development contributes more to insulin resistance or a beta cell mass is difficult to predict, the subject still under investigation. And with all this environmental factor, we have mitochondrial dysfunction, endoplasmic reticulum stress, oxidative stress, and inflammatory stress. Again, worsened by obesity and a nutrient excess, all together drive both beta cell dysfunction and IR with worsening of diabetes. What about progressive loss of beta cell function and beta cell mass during the course of a diabetes when glucose levels are already high? As Dr. Godbole highlighted very well about the lipotoxicity, DAG, and excess fatty acids, which is called as high lipid level, lipotoxicity in turn would worsen pancreatic function or beta cell function. Now, he also highlighted about uh, not only the visceral obesity which matters, I would say ectopic deposition of fat which matters most, which is in the liver, which is also in the skeletal muscle and it is also in the pancreas. So all organs dealing with the glucose metabolism have an ectopic fat deposition which would result into worsening of beta cell function, persistent hyperglycemia due to either patient inertia or a physician inertia or a failure of therapy. A long period of high glucose will also worsen. And there is, of course, at baseline, a genetic programming which is designed for worsening of beta cell. Both result into poor insulin secretion and apoptosis. And in many people, there is concomitant amyloid deposition and inflammatory cytokines. Coming to inflammatory cytokines, there are all these molecular mechanisms. There is a lot of proteomics and genomics being currently worked up in relation to development of a newer therapeutic targets, which could help in either reduction of insulin resistance or preventing beta cell failure. There are some pathways and then two important molecules are interleukin-1 beta and TNF-alpha which drive all intracellular events in the direction of apoptosis of beta cell. Again, there are a lot of molecular pathways and you can see here all different targets. Probably there are some controlled by genetics, some controlled by environmental nutrient factors which drive worsening of beta cell function and beta cell non-responsiveness as well as beta cell death. 
an interesting concept which is quite well known for quite some time, amylin or islet amyloid polypeptide, which is also seen as one of the reasons for beta cell failure. So this is a neuroendocrine hormone, 37 amino acid peptide, secreted together with insulin all along in response to various stimulation for beta cell, and this is seen as creating an intra-amyloid polypeptide fibrils which subsequently come in the way or of insulin stimulation or insulin degranulation or insulin responsiveness. And this could be partly a reason for beta cell death. This is also one of a therapeutic target to tackle amylin polypeptide. And this has been well worked up. We will not go into the detail. I have five minutes left. Looking into the second aspects of uh, pancreas is not only the beta cell, but we should also focus on alpha cell because type 2 diabetics have higher glucagon secretion or higher glucagon level, inappropriately high for that level of glucose. Not only the beta cell mass is low, when insulin is low, there is excess secretion of glucagon. There are almost 20% of cells which are in pancreas or in islets, which produce glucagon. Beta cells are 70%, and islets, alpha cells, make sizable amount. And we know that reduced beta cell mass or pulsatility would result into us alpha cell dysfunction. They are coupled with each other. If there is low insulin sensing by alpha cell, there would be an excess gl glucagon secretion. And this slide is quite well known to you. Role of incretin defect in type 2 diabetes and this has been well picked up by researchers and now we have a class of DPP-4 inhibitor, GLP-1 agonist which provide you more GLP-1 based action physiological as well as supraphysiological to treat hyperglycemia but they work partly through pancreatic pathway, they also have other beneficial actions. So there is therapeutic target of a different nature on other than beta cell, also an alpha cell that highlights the role of pancreas in, as a root cause of type 2 diabetes. Just touching how do you estimate beta cell, quite a difficult exercise, probably fasting insulin or prandial insulin does not have so much of value and is not part of a standard of care. Fasting C-peptide and stimulated C-peptide are slightly more useful, we do it for diagnosis of a trying to rule out type 1 diabetes. Homa beta is frequently quoted in many studies, which was more easily done with fasting plasma glucose and insulin. And there are some sophisticated indices which are done with oral GTT tests. These are some of the formulas which are readily available, simple to calculate if you want to calculate Homa IR or Homa beta. If you want to calculate disposition index, you might have for glucose and insulin as well as for C-peptide. And this shows that across different blood glucose level, insulin secretion is low. As the person moves from one stage to another stage, it is predominantly insulin level. What decide the severity or progression of diabetes? This was quite an interesting study, diet, Belfast diet study, which has a 10 years follow-up of seeing the worsening of a diabetes. And you can see here, for the same level of insulin resistance, different people, the people were divided into four different groups and based on their beta cell function, they worsened over a period of 10 years. Some who did extremely well only on diet had a good beta cell function. Those who had very reduced beta cell function progressed rapidly. That divided people and required different, different additional therapy at three years, five years, or 10 years. This is HOMA insulin resistance constant all throughout. And our patients eat plenty of starch, 70% carb which come from, which results into a great demand for an insulin onslaught on beta cells. And this shows that over different years of diabetes, 5, 10, 15, 20, prandial C-peptide responses get poor and poor and patients re reaches a stage of insulinopenia. Do we have any modalities where beta cells could have, be, have a replication? Initially, there is probably a hypertrophy, but eventually results into apoptosis. So till we replace beta cell mass or find out the modality of getting more beta cell, we have no option the balance view of pathogenesis appears between imbalance between insulin sensitivity 
and insulin secretion. Longitudinal and cross-sectional studies demonstrate that earliest detectable abnormality is body's ability to respond to insulin. So that's an early abnormality, but pancreas is able to appropriately augment its secretion to offset the insulin resistance. Glucose tolerance remains normal. With time, beta cells fail to maintain its high rate of insulin secretion and relative insulinopenia leads to development of impaired and over diabetes. I would only request all of you to read a new paper of March Lancet 2018 by Ema Elquist, who showed five different six clusters based on six different parameters which was presented at last ESD, which will help you the relative contribution of IR and secretory defect in a given patient in reference to how patient would need a treatment and will develop, therapy will develop a complication. Very important article for a clinicians to read in reference to what we both speakers have tried to say and teach you on what is the root cause of diabetes. Thank you.